How's everybody doing? I love it, I love, I like. Uh, uh, has, has, uh, how many people here, oh, I see actually quite a few, how many people here have been to, to any of our other uh, panels here so far in Nerdy Scoop? Nice, yeah, uh, sh uh, show of hands, round of applause, whatever you want to do, that's fine. Ma'am, do you realize that you have no hair on your head right now? <laughs> sorry, I don't mean to call you out. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Uh, hey, uh, hi, I'm Zach, uh, I'm Zachary Levi. Uh, thank you, I appreciate that. Golf clap. Um, I'm just going to sit right here for a second. Uh, so, um, man, I, I can't even tell you. I, when we started this whole endeavor of a Nerd HQ, I, I really honestly didn't know. I mean, I believe that it was going to be, yes, oh, uh, vamp, uh, vamp, vamp. Yeah, I, uh, I'm fine. All right. I'll, I'll do I'll dance a jig. I don't care. Um, but when we, when we started it, I, I, I really believed in it because I thought, you know, we can do this really cool thing where I can call some of my friends that I've been so blessed to work with over the years and I know have really awesome hearts and they really care about their fans and they are into really kind of uh, interactive and organic experiences where they want to talk to you guys and they, and they know that you have questions for them and you want to talk to them. And if we can do that and we can give everybody this fun win-win, then we can have a win-win-win and all that comes together and you spend 20 bucks, you secure a seat, right? You don't have to wait all day in line and all that money, every penny goes to Operation Smile. And I think that that, thank you very much, thank you. And that's, by the way, that's a, that's a round of applause for you guys because thank you so much for, uh, for believing in that and being a part of that journey with us because if you, can do, if you can do something where you can, you know, by the way, we're all capitalists, it's America. I'm trying to sell t-shirts and hats and all that kind of stuff, right? But I wanna do that and, and do it for an awesome cause at the same time. And, and everyone who's come and done panels with us so far also sees that and they also believe in it. And when I was able to pitch it over the phone, which was a very convoluted conversation, let me tell you, when I'm like, so I'm doing this thing, when they're like, what are you doing? I don't know, I don't understand what it is. And I'm like, just trust me, just show up, just trust me, it'll be great. And, uh, and one of those people, wait, hold on, are we good? Oh, we're good, I'm getting a thumbs up. One, no, not a thumbs up? Yes, a thumbs up. Oh, yes, oh yeah, <laughs> and I'm getting a thumbs up from my dad. Hey, everybody say hi to Daryl. Say hi, Daryl. <laughs> oh, dad, I love you. Uh, my, this is my, this is my dad's second Comic-Con. Like, he's actually been in the trenches. Like, he's been around. Like, he's really, yeah, let's give Daryl a round of applause, shall we? <laughs> it's embarrass my dad part, embarrass my dad. Uh, so, um, so, uh, oh, I, and I, I got a little surprise for you, actually, after I, uh, introduced who's coming up, but, well, I, not that I even really need to. You guys all know why you're here, right? That, uh, you, you oh, oh my gosh. Someone restrain that woman. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, yeah, no. Oh my gosh, your friend's like literally like, stop, 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 stop. You're gonna, oh, it's your mom. Oh, hi, mom. Um, so listen, Scott Bakula. No, 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 no. You get outside. You get back. I'm not introducing you yet. You turn right around. <laughs> I've got so much. I got, I got too much to say. It's going to be like literally five seconds. Just bear with me. Um, the man that... There you go, sit right there. Don't look at him, you look at me right now. This is my time. This is my time. So let me just, let me just dote on him for just a second, right? So aside from being a giant fan of Quantum Leap, uh, and Enterprise, and men of a certain age, yes, right, yeah. Um, the, and I was getting there. Jeez, Louise. Uh, I was so privileged and honored to have a man who, <laughs> how, somebody needs to take that photo. My TV dad and my real dad sitting three seats apart. Now that is a photo. Uh, Scott, that's my dad, by the way. Oh, you <laughs> All right, enough of them. Back to me, back to me, back to me. So, you know, when you, when you work in uh, whatever your job is, uh, but I, I guess no, very specifically to film and television, you end up having people play your family and your friends, and you really hope, that, uh, beyond hope, that they're not going to be jerks, and they're going to be, like, really cool and down to earth, and not just appreciate the job and the process, but appreciate people and really take care of them. And, and, uh, and in spades, Scott Bakula is so the man. He is so the man. And when I called him and I said, would you please come and be a part of this thing that I'm doing at Comic-Con? He said, sign me up. I'd love to be a part of it. 
So and and he does it for you guys, and he does it for the for the kids around the world for Operation Smile. So it was with great pride and great pleasure that I introduce to you here at Nerd HQ, Scott Bakula, ladies and gentlemen. Now it's yes. Now, now you come. Keep it going for Scott. Keep it going for Scott. Get up here. Mike two, Mike two. Oh, I'm gonna be sitting here or drinking a beer. I don't know. I'll be doing something. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. We're gonna talk to each other across the room with microphones. With microphones. Hey, Zach. What are you? Uh, yeah. Uh, the surprise that I totally forgot to tell you is that Scott will be available for a signing after you. Yes. I figured you might like that part. What's that? Oh, and no video. That's right. I keep forgetting to say that. Guys, you can't video and you can't do uh, flash photography during the panel. And the reason why is because we have these two cameras that are streaming live to the world for everyone who wasn't fortunate enough to be in the seats that you're in right now. So let's give them a break. Let's, them, let's let them watch it. No flashing, no video. Scott Bakula, the floor is yours. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't like this your Q&A begins. <laughs> Go wherever you want. It's a little sparkly. I don't, I don't know if I can bring this floor home with me. I almost fell, I'm fine, go. Maybe no more beer, I'm thinking. <laughs> See, once you play the dad, you just keep doing it, right? Maybe that's enough beer, uh, kid. He gave me the floor and fell off the stage. <laughs> no, we're streaming. Nobody, you didn't say streaming. Yeah, I gotta go. I gotta go. I'm I don't do the streaming thing. This chair, what's this, have you been sitting in this? Use it, then that's like a you know Tom Jones thing. Well, what's new? Who's like hat? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> For those of you who don't know who Tom Jones was, <laughs> well, there was a movie called Tom Jones, but that's not the Tom Jones from Wales that we're speaking of. You know who Tom Jones was, and I don't mean that in a disparaging way, but I. But I know you, so it's, I, I'm allowed to say that. Hi, everybody. Are you? Ha this is like an oasis away from the. And there's nothing wrong with over there. I was over there this morning, and I was over there last year, and I was over. I was down here about 15 years ago when Comic Con was a baby, and the, the whole thing took place in a ho little hotel ballroom. And um, and you could, everybody that was there, you could see them all. They were all at little tables. Burt, Burt Reynolds somehow was up on like a like a throne, like in the sky. And there were steps, and he was up above. <laughs> all right, let's start all over again. I'm gonna come back up. No, thank you. That's like a that's like a bomb from the show. Underneath the box that I was sitting on, and who's going to come out and take that apart? But first, we must fight each other in one of your. But first, you must play the flamenco guitar, and then he. I have to say this. Am I supposed to ask answer questions or? Yes. All right. It's all. It's free. It's it, we're we're streaming. Uh, um, Zach has like the way the show has evolved it reminds me so much of Quantum Leap in a lot of ways because he gets to do so much stuff he's got the little the built around franchise but they've expanded it and blown it up so he can dress up one week and do this and do that and the next week and he's learning new skills on the fly and, and it, it takes me back to what at the time nobody had ever done before and now He's getting a chance to do it, and happily, he can do all this stuff. They're not, you know, they're not having to fake it with other people doing it. So, I, I'm envious of that, and al also at the same time, I, we're kind of these kindred spirits, and it's ironic that I would get hired to, and I don't know why I got hired to this day to come in and play his dad. Somebody must have liked me because they just called and said, you know, we want to pitch you this idea, and you're this guy that we've been talking about. Well, we. We won't talk about who, who, it, who it is. It's because you're handsome, Scott. <laughs> and I have a handsome son. Is that yeah. what you say? 
Typecast, come on. Typecast, except unusually short. <laughs> Only on your set. <laughs> the land of the giants. You walk on that set, and it's like, really? And then, and then freaking Chevy Chase shows up, and he's a giant. And I just, I've, I've never felt small on a set, ever, in, in low these many years. And between you and the, the big Baldwin kid and, you know, <laughs> and then Chevy, there I was. So, um, but I just so, uh, I it's, we have this kind of kinship, and um, I'm so proud of who he is in the business, what he does on camera, how he handles a, a crew and a set. I, kno I know you guys are all fans of his, and you hear about what he does, but it is not e – and he's directing. He's doing uh, kind of all these really great things. But it's very hard to do day, on, day in and day out, and you have to be able to muster a certain inner power that allows you to not just come to work and do your job, but then carry a lot of other people around on your back. And it's day after day after hour after hour, and he, he amazingly does it always with uh, this kind of boundless, youthful energy and, and positivity. And it's, it was just a joy to be around, and uh, I had so much fun on the show. And, uh, and, and it's mostly due to, to him and the enthusiasm that he allowed everyone else to uh, be a part of. And everybody just thought they were at a great big chuck party every day. And, uh, and, and you do your best work when you're having a good time, right, and having fun, and you like the people that are around you, and the guy that's, in the, that's captaining the ship clearly appreciates everybody else around him and, and acknowledges their value and their worth, and that's kind of what the planet, sh the planet is about. And uh, so I, I, I tip my hat to this guy, and you, I'm so glad you're all here supporting him and his, this wonderful cause, Operation Smile. So, thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> here we are chatting, kind of like Hollywood guys on mics to each other. Where'd you get that T-shirt? I don't know. Uh, it's downstairs at the merch booth. <laughs> 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 we just drop stuff in like that. Um, oh, oh, also be careful of the bottom of the mic. Uh, if you touch the bottom, that's when you get staticky, and you might die. <laughs> I get the bombs under here, the microphone's an exploding mic, but we have the guy in the room that can solve all of those problems. So, <laughs> uh, shall we just have some questions? People want to shout stuff out, or uh, I can, yes, go ahead. Having also uh, seen you on television in a movie, I was wondering if you could share with us your thoughts on the positives and negatives of all three media. Well, uh, the positive and negative of all three media. Uh, I kind of break it down. Theater is immediate. This experience is right now. This, uh, this will never happen again. You can't go home and play it on a video. Even the people that are streaming, I, I love you all. Buy all the stuff. Um, <laughs> but... I'm waiting for I'm waiting for God to come through the microphone. So there he is. No, okay. <laughs> Just feeling a little pat on the back. And uh, um, so at this is this moment. The folks that are here, this this will never happen again. And um, we have to retain that. So your 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 mind and your heart and your everything is is a part of this collective group. Um, it's different every time. I like that about theater. Uh, television is. Uh, has gotten so much better in so many ways in the last uh, 15 years. Uh, so many writers and directors and actors have come to the medium that wouldn't have given it the time of day 15 years ago because it was television. Um, but now uh, some of the best work uh, in, in all entertainment is, is done uh, on television. And, uh, and I'm, I'm proud to be a part of that group. Um, I delineate television and movies in that I like television uh, in a sense more because you get – it get it gets back to you sooner. You don't usually, unless you were on TNT on my show. Um, <laughs> it, 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 it normally you make it, and a few months later you get to see it, and and that's that's great. Movies sometimes you make it, and two years go by, or the process takes so long to get it done um, that it, it's just uh, it, it's 
it's wonderful when you get to it or they're adding effects and that takes another two years and um, it, it just takes so much longer. So theater happens right now. We get to have this experience. Television, kind of the same. When you do half hour and you have an audience in the old days, um, that was fun. It was almost like theater and that's kind of where I did a lot of my work when I first came out to LA was in a lot of half hour and that felt good to me too. It felt n natural if that's, if that's correct to use and, and then movies are they have this big place in the world about movies, and I love making movies, and uh, um, I've been able to make some a, a couple good ones, and uh, I, and I like that, and uh, but I like doing all three of them. Theater's my first, my first love, and musical theater above that. That's what. That's another thing we have in common. <laughs> I taught him everything he knows. <laughs> I hate to bring it up. Yes, go ahead. Men of a Certain Age was canceled. It was an outstanding show. So, you know, thank you for doing that work. I don't remember if we saw your body after you died on Chuck. Could we maybe see you again in the, in the, last, ep in the last season? Because even a flashback. All I can say <laughs> is that you are correct. You never saw my body. What a tease. <laughs> I got you another season, didn't I? <laughs> Lin Linda's going to drop through the ceiling on my head right now and say, What do you mean, you? I was there all year last year, killing myself. <laughs> Sorry, Linda. Just kidding. Joking. Streamers, joking. I don't know if I could follow that with another question here. That was good. Okay. Um, but how do you keep acting fresh? What, I mean, you mentioned with Chuck what it was like motivating you to come to work every day. But, you know, you're about the same age. So after a while in a career, um, what makes it something that you still want to do every day? Well, the business is so miserable that if you don't want to be there, you look for ways to get out because it's just not, um, the, the only pure enjoyment is the time when you're working with the other actors. And I've said this to e forever to anybody that, you know, you have to Im take that moment that's happening on the set, on the stage, wherever it is, and get the most out of it. That's why rehearsal is fun, which you don't get in, in television but in the theater, because you're discovering, you're working with that. That's why I became an actor, because I loved working with another actor and listening and, and learning about their character, about who they are as a person, all those kinds of things. So that drew me into the business. I recently told some kids in high school kids, I just seen a production, a great production of Pippin that uh, my wife had choreographed down at Hamilton High School in, in, in Los Angeles. And one of the kids was talking about, oh my God, that's great. And, and I said, I hate to say this, this is the best it will ever be. And his little face was like. <laughs> and I said, it, you have to soak this up because the love and the joy and the, there's no, nobody's got any spin on this. Nobody's trying to get it, you know, a, an agent out of it. It's just high school and, and you're that age when so much is going on and you have this moment, a wonderful moment of, True expression and and letting it go and uh, really that's that's the joy of it. So I've kind of taken I've hung on to that, <laughs> I, you know, and I just kept I, I that's uh, stayed with me my whole career, and um, I I love still meeting new people, working with new people, discovering the the great joy of quantum. And I know Zach's experienced this too. Is you have so many guest stars, you have new people all the time coming through. I worked with thousands, over a thousand actors in, in four and a half seasons that were new to me every week. So each episode, Dean and I were there, and then they brought in brand new people. So I had to like figure out, and you know, you only had eight days, or in, sometimes a lot longer back then, but you don't get that anymore. But to figure out who that guy is, what makes them tick as an actor, how can we get the most out of this scene, see ya, 
And if it's a girl, it's like, we have to get in bed and make out. See ya. <laughs> or, you know, uh, I'm washed up on a beach with a naked woman lying on top of me. Sun's going down. Hurry, 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 hurry. See ya. You know, and you just have to kind of, and, and that those, are, those experiences are, are priceless and unique into our, our lifestyle. And I just uh, um, adored them and, uh, and still do. And when I can separate all the other stuff out of it, uh, Men of a Certain Age was a blast. We had a great time together, and, and the audience loved us, the folks that watched us, and the network loved us, and they just couldn't figure out how to bring us back. But I'll never forget that experience. It was, it was, uh, you know, uh, it was, it was a great time. So I, I just have always said to anybody that listens, especially as I get older, um, uh, try and enjoy being the moment, you know, and not be looking at ahead and, and what's going on. And as long as I can do that, and now as I'm looking at a different portion of my life, the second half of my life, um, I uh, I still want to keep that going. That's a long answer, but, but that's a good question. Thank you. Let's get to this gentleman in the back. Yeah. Quantum Leap is actually uh, one of my favorite shows. Uh, uh, you went through so many different roles, and you just jumped into a lot of different stories and plots. What would you say was your favorite role you had to step into and in kind of the story that happened? Probably my favorite episode uh, is, and this sounds really egotistical, is when I played myself. Um, but I got to go back at 16 to my life uh, with my family when my father was still alive, and I knew that he was going to die from cancer, from smoking, and there I was sitting in the house again with all this knowledge and trying to give him hints and not. So that was a really wonderfully crafted episode, and uh, uh, that and I played my father in it also, which was, I kind of said, hey, you know, wouldn't it be great if we could, you know, do, let me do some split screen stuff back in the day when it was really hard to do that stuff. And, uh, oh my gosh, you guys are so lucky what, how far it's all come. <laughs> I mean, literally, you, you don't know this, but, you know, Dean would beam, you know, the beaming in, right? The, the Dean would come in with his little beep, beep, beep. And we would, the, the first AD on the set would literally yell, Freeze! And you'd be like... <laughs> and Dean would run in from the side, and he'd come in there, and like, he'd just keep running in there. And then he'd go, unfreeze! And you'd start walking again. And that's how the magic was happening. <laughs> and knowing that, if you go back and look, you can see back... I mean, it's background. People walking on the street, and they're going... You know... Now, now none of that stuff is, it's not even an issue anymore. It's just like, w bring them in whenever we want to. We can fix it later. Go, keep going, you know. And um, it, it's, uh, but that, that, I got to play my father in that episode also. And that was a two-parter. We went to Vietnam, and I, I dealt with my brother in Vietnam, and uh, um, that was good. And any episode where I got to sing was also kind of a, kind of a plus for me. La Mancha and stuff like that. Thanks. Now back to the, now only if you have a hat, put it on, because I seem to be drawn to the, the hat questions. I have my suit on. Just so Did I you forget you had a hat on? I, had, I didn't. <laughs> okay. Uh, I love your musical work and saw you in Dancing in the Dark here in Eulage. It's wonderful. Thank you. But my question is, what was your Star Trek experience like as a pilot? You know, love the show, but I know there were a lot of issues with it that we wish it had continued. Well, thanks. Thanks. It was, you know, look, I say... We got four years. We made 98 shows in four years, which by any other standards on the planet is a success, except in the Star Trek world. <laughs> because people literally from the beginning were like, wow, what's it feel like seven years of the show? And I said, well, it, I've been around the block once and a half, and I wouldn't count the world has changed and we're not syndicated, which all the other ones were, which is a no whole nother business proposition. We were on, if you remember, UPN, which doesn't exist anymore. And uh, I just said, I said what I was saying earlier. Take advantage of what the time is right now. Don't count on seven years. Don't buy the house in the country. Let's just do the work and do the best we can. And that's all we can control. 
that's the bottom line. The only thing that the actors can control is the work you do on the set. So you show up, you try to be prepared, you try to be, uh, you try to make it a positive experience. You do the best work you can because then the editors and everybody else down the line chop you up unless you're in the theater. So uh, it, I had a ball. We had great a great cast. They were all so different and unique uh, people, and all with their own set of life challenges and issues and 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 history. And we plunged into it, and you know we were barely out of the gate, and 9/11 happened, and that changed the entire scope of our series. I was thinking about it this morning because I was on this panel with uh, Bill uh, across the street. I call him Bill now <laughs> because we're buddies, but. Before last summer, we never met in all these years. We had never spoken a word to each other. So when he asked me to be a part of this captain's uh, movie that he's come up with where he interviews all the captains, it's a documentary, um, that was the first time I met him. I meet him on literally on screen. We didn't talk in – we didn't do makeup together. We didn't go – you know, we just – I went out to a ranch. He walked down one road. I it was, you know, uh, it was like an old western shootout and, and uh, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And – we were meeting each other for the first time. Um, oh, I'm, I've maybe lost track of where I was going with that one. Yes? 9-11. So 9-11 came along, and, and it, as, as we're all very well aware of, it changed the consciousness of all of us, and that affected the writers. And suddenly this show, this franchise that was always about the future and the survival of mankind and the positive way we have solved all of our problems here, so much so that we can go out and try and figure stuff out in, the, in space. Our show was going out before everybody else without a set of rules. And everybody else, the Federation existed. So they knew how to behave. And we expected everybody to behave a certain way. We not only did not have those rules to follow, which we could hold up as a shining beacon to in deep, dark space, our rug had been pulled out from underneath us here in this country and, and really around the planet. And that affected everybody that wrote for the show. It affected where the show went. The lighthearted uh, feeling that we were thought we were going to go for, it, it just didn't make sense anymore. And so the... the had we gone on longer, I think we would have kind of pulled up and out of that, but we had to go there. So it wasn't the romp, you know, that Shatner had in the 60s. It was just, you know, you don't want to see guys with, you know, triples six weeks after 9-11, you know. And uh, it, I think it was the right way to go, but I think ultimately um, in terms of getting seven years, it, it didn't help us. But I'm still very proud of the work that we did, and, and especially coming through that time on the planet where the show has always represented the best of what our planet can be. All of a sudden, uh, our planet wasn't such a great – we weren't living in the, you know, the little ivory tower. So um, it was an interesting time, but I, I enjoyed every second of it. Thank you. Okay. We're going now to, oh, hats and glasses. It, it's and my husband. It's okay. Oh, it's okay. So you've mentioned a few times that you love singing, and I was wondering, I'm sure all of us here would love to hear you sing us a song. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't I already sing a little while ago? I, did I, I, I don't, what's I don't feel that was enough. Um, but that's how everybody <laughs> felt with Tom Jones. Uh, uh, Just guys, never guys, enough. <laughs> guys, what do you think? Do you want to hear him sing? I got to think about you know, if I lived longer on Chuck, we probably would have had some nice duets. We could have, we could have sung. And how about Zach on the Academy Awards last year? Let's just pause for a minute. Because I want to tell you, performing on award shows is scary shit. <laughs> and he just like, I was like, oh, I was, I was so nervous. Is he gone? He's just, oh no, he's there. He's gone. Good, I can talk about him. <laughs> uh, I was so nervous for him. Because I've done the Tony Awards, I've done the Kennedy Honors, I've done all these different things, the song for the president, the da, 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 da. and it is 
I can't tell you how nerve wracking it is to be kind of on live television and thinking the worst possible thoughts about about what could go wrong, you know? And uh, he just like walked out like he, he did it every week. And I hated him at that moment. <laughs> it's like, how could he be that good, a great singer, and so calm, and, and act like it's just another walk in the park? And the movie was great, he did a great job, forgetting about the Academy Awards, right? I thought the movie was great, I thought his voice, I did an animated film a long time ago, <laughs> called Cats Don't Dance. Which nobody saw, except the, the same people that watch men of a certain age <laughs> saw Cats Don't Dance. Oh, boy. What's that? What's a VHS? <laughs> your, kids, your kids did. No, you did. You did. Thank you. I thought it was great. I, I had a... And I'm not like, I'm not, it's not upstairs to buy, so there's no, you know, and it is, it only probably exists on VHS. <laughs> Video high what? What's the S for in that? What? System? Video, video what? Sta See how bad? None of us know. <laughs> That's why we got out of it, because we all know what DVD stands for. I'm hearing 20 different answers. <laughs> Digital video display? Is anybody buying that over here? No, all right. Disc, video, disc, all right, all right. Anyway, now sing, shut up and sing, you act. <laughs> this is me, I'm, I'm pausing, I'm trying to think what I want to sing, because there's so many choices. Imagine, imagine, I'm going to imagine La Mancha. In La Mancha. I just sang La Mancha in Germany. Oh, well, that I performed in my life is probably um, La Mancha. But another thing that Zach and I have in, in, uh, that we share is one of his earliest musicals was mine, which was Godspell. And I, I love doing that. I did that like five or six times. So, see, he could do, uh, I've only ever played, no, I, that's not true. I played Jesus like four times, <laughs> and I think Jeffrey once, and then I was in the chorus once. No, maybe that's when I played Jeffrey. He's, I think he's only played Jesus. So I would have to do like, you know, John the Baptist, and we could do, wait a minute. <laughs> when he comes back. There's a there's a there's a little soft shoe from uh, and he'll know it from from that the John the Baptist and Jesus do so we'll do that let's see we'll do all right so that's one don't let me forget I I know so uh, other songs uh, imagine I've seen that so many times though that I'll sing I, and last time I sang I didn't remember the oh, the words it was really bad Yoko wrote me and said really. But I'll, I'll sing, imagine, and what, what do you want from La Mancha? Impossible Dream? No, you're sick of that. Dulcinea? No? I am I. Hear me now, O oh, the bleak and unbearable world. Thou art base and debauched as can be. And the knight with his banners are bravely unfurled. Now hurls down his gauntlet to thee. I am I, Don Quixote. That's it. Hey. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Beautiful. Next question. <laughs> left, 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 left. Right, left, right, left, left, left. Lift. Yes. Oh my goodness, you, the quantum leap and your performance in quantum leap so shaped me and um, in a good way. In I a fantastic <laughs> way. <laughs> in a fantastic okay, way. Good. And you have such an incredible passion. And so the two part question: Where do you attribute a lot of the passion that you have, a lot of the, that inner drive? Um, did it come from when you were younger? And then what sh helped? What uh, show or shaped you um, when you were younger and watching mm -hmm. um, TV and so forth? Monty Python and the Holy Grail. How did 
threw the cacket across the room. I don't know. I flung her. <laughs> That's a terrible answer. <laughs> oh, my God. My parents hated Monty Python and the Holy Grail more than they hated the Three Stooges. Um, I used to run home from school and watch Lost in Space, um, followed by the Three Stooges. Um, you know, I lo you know when I was growing up, there were a lot of variety shows on, so you got to watch Carol Burnett and all these people, and, and I've since got to know Carol Burnett and work with her, which has just been was it was a great gift. But I admired all those people. I the things that shaped me were theater uh, experiences that really that really grabbed me, and that's why I, I went there in my life. I don't know why. Uh, sometimes I think about, should I be getting tired of doing this? You know, because you hear like, I remember like 10 years ago, Richard Gere said he was retiring at 50. And I thought, really? He's retiring at 50, an actor that retires at 50. And of course he didn't. But but we can we have this scope of our entire lives that we can inhabit characters and and l and the more you live the more you learn and the more that informs your work so that's what part of what keeps actors going is because you you know uh, you know 20 years ago uh uh i had never been divorced and then i got divorced and so i had all this experience in, be in the then with my kids from that divorce and my ex-wife and that shaped my whole life and then I, I i fell in love again and i had more kids and 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 I and I met, made new friends, and my friends and so. We collect all of this stuff as actors, and it goes in, and you get sometimes opportunities to kind of bring those things out, and that's what I mean. We're just these kind of instruments, and that's what we do, and so, um, I I I dearly love to perform, and I love to sing, and. Um, I think that I will, you know, end my career and phase into the theater, back into the theater, which is where I started, because that's just what is what feels comfortable to me. And look, theater can be painful, and you know, when you look out and people haven't shown up, <laughs> and uh, you know, it hurts, and you don't know that when you're in your house looking at the TV set, and until the next day when the numbers come out, but it's not as as personable as personal, but when it happens and when it works, it's it's great. I did have a wonderful experience down here a couple years ago at the Old Globe. I had a great experience at, at, at the Ford's Theater, uh, and, and I just love getting back uh, in front of an audience. And I don't feel like this, this is a unique experience when you get to come to a, uh, and sit in a room with you all like this and be surrounded by, embraced by people that like you before you walk in the door, you know? There's no, there's no like proving. I mean, I know there. I saw a few of your faces were like, back to work. Jeez, and it's Christmas. Oh, I'm so sick of that guy. But um, and his show's canceled. So why do we even have to listen to him? But um, but I'm fine. Could I have the towel back, please? <laughs> he didn't say anything about tears. No, he didn't say that it would I make myself cry as I fall off the stage. Thank you. And back to you. What's new, Pussycat? Whoa. Just when you throw a towel at for my whole life, I've always sung that song. Um, anyway, I hope that answered your, your question a little bit. Le do I have to stay on the left side? Left side. away and having such a strong fan base because I love Quantum Leap and when it came out on Netflix I watched the whole season probably twice in a row and um, I was just wondering how that affects you when it, when it comes back in your ears like why did they stop that? Well uh, with the advent of, of all of the cable world and now this world where our work is preserved and, and redisplayed so often it's really changed that whole the landscape of, of how your work can stay present. Um, so I'm constantly meeting new fans. 
and that's really it's kind of bizarre. They look at me like you don't look the same. But so once you get over that sting, um, but no, you know, to be a part of a show that is is timeless and still resonates, and um, you know, I, when somebody comes up, I, just recently, the last couple of months, I've had several different people coming up to their parents saying, I just want you to know that my dad and I always used to watch this show together on, you know, when, when you guys were on. And that's something that doesn't happen anymore for the most part, that families don't sit around and watch stuff together because one guy's doing one thing and the other guy's on the this and the other guy's getting into this. And 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 so that, that part of what TV used to represent in the home I is gone, but it, it, it's – this show keeps that alive for me, and, and, and I, really, I really love that sensibility. It's a little weird because you, you become caught in a kind of a time you know, warp or whatever, and, and the show stays the same, and the good news is that people like it. I'm not embarrassed by it because there are some people that are like, oh, do we, let's not talk about you know, that show because that's – I, I hated that or whatever. I'm 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 proud of it and it it has legs. It lasts and it and it's still still great. Uh, you know, it's uh, is it sometimes I see stuff and I go, oh, that, that was not a good choice. But um, <coughs> but you know, I was I was young. I was we were going like crazy to make the show. Um, I having the show out there still is is a good thing because it affects people. Still affects people. The the basic more morals of the show, which Don never liked to talk about, but the truth of just walking in somebody else's shoes and, and, and thinking about, you can go to any, any uh, theological text and find some version of that, uh, how, to, how to live and how to treat other people. Um, I think that that's, you know, unintentionally profound and people re have still respond to it and, and I love that. And so do all the people that made the show. We still talk about it. Thank you. <laughs> oh, right side. Right side of the room. I saw, saw on your thing and uh, as the unofficial spokesman, spokesperson for this side of the room, yes. I'm tired of your profile. Please face it. You got it. Thank you. It's such a wonderful face. And I want you to know also that Actually, I don't have a question. I just had a few. You just things. had a. You just a had a rebuke. I, <laughs> I just had a few things I want to get off my it's chest. Just, here we are. Go okay. ahead, talk about. I it. want you to know you were referring, you know, commenting or alluding to your age. I want you to know that men of a certain age, your age, are still vastly attractive to a multiple. <laughs> well, thank you. Range of women. So you still got it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. But and the profile, not so much. No. <laughs> No, no, no. It's not because I don't like your profile. That's a good note. I appreciate I that. I just, you were face. I was feel. we were feeling, I was feeling left out. Well, here's the thing. I was feeling bad because they're kind of in total dark over there. So but I wanted to give them not, a little they attention. They can see you. They can, but I wanted to see them. I want to see you too, you know. Well, here but I, I was know. dealing with all the hat people <laughs> over here. <laughs> and they didn't say anything over there. I we need to, to go on, Ann. Tell us some more. What else? <laughs> what else is there? I actually do have two questions for you. Okay. I would like to know, how old are your second group of children? Uh, just turned 12 and 15 and a half. Just okay. got his license, pre-license. His, his learner's permit. Learner's permit. Why is he getting booed? <laughs> He's not even here. And the other question. I boo him at home, but you, <laughs> you, you don't get to boo him. That's your privilege. You get to boo him. Ooh. Ooh, like like a new driver on the road. Oh, I'll listen. Leave your uh, emails and texts, and I'll call you when he's coming out. <laughs> All right. I'll let you know when he's driving, and, and I'll give you his route. <laughs> My last. Thing I drove with him already illegally. He's a very good driver. <laughs> My last thing is. Do Don't you stream that. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> There's okay. got to be a delay. Do you have anything in the wings now that you think is going to happen that we will be able to see you on a weekly or on the big screen or some basis? No, I barely crawled down to San Diego to do this, so I'm still uh, I'm in mourning still. But uh, no, I no I don't. I have a lot of stuff in the works. My agent is back there. If anybody has any uh, 
We're trying to do the, uh, the movie of Enterprise, and we need $73 million. So if you have any, Brian's taking that money back there. So, and we're taking it in million-dollar increments, because why mess around? So I feel like there's 73 millionaires in the room right now. Investors in Hollywood, that's a good investment. <laughs> really, really. Thank you for that. I'm giving you my full face. Okay. If anybody has a question over there, how do you guys like my profile? Oh, boy. Just appeal to the actor's vanity. You, I'm not picking any more. You pick. You got the mic. There's a girl. There's a young lady in the back. Um, I have a question for you about um, the Star Trek 2009 movie. Were you aware that they were going to reference Admiral Archer and his dog, or was that a surprise to you when it came out? They had to get clearance from me so I could speak to the dog and get clearance from him. <laughs> and uh, after a long and bitter negotiation, uh, they hung up. <laughs> I had no idea. In fact, I'm sitting with my two of my sons, my 20-year-old and my 15-year-old, and they're jacked up to see the movie. I couldn't get an invitation to the premiere. Yeah. My publicist is in the back of the room. You can yell at Jay, too. Yes. But, but, but first give the million dollars to Brian, then yell at Jay after that. I couldn't get an invitation, which was a little hard to tell my, my kids. But I think they wanted to separate the new from the old. And I understand that from a, a – I don't understand it. But um, – oh, it went out again. And uh, – so we were sitting there, and it came. It went by so fast. I heard Porthos, and I went, "Did I? Did I just hear?" And so I'm turning to them to say, "Did you? Did he?" And it's like, "Shut up!" <laughs> <laughs> like they didn't know me all of a sudden. You know, I'm just a talker in the in the movie theater. So um, I was. It was a complete surprise to me, and I had to go leave the theater and call other people and say, "Did I really hear that my dog got billing?" And I, I think they said caption. I think my character was mentioned I in the same sentence, they said right? Admiral Archer. Admi the well, yes, I didn't want to. I didn't want to gloss myself as Admiral, but because for me, I'm still Captain. Otherwise, I could have been in Shatner's thing. You know. Well, well, yeah. But he ended up an Admiral too. But hopefully, there'll be a sequel, so you should talk the about Admirals. starring in that. And Bill likes to do stuff like that, so now he can do the sequel. It's in the works. I'm calling him. Get me Shatner on the phone. Get me. On the phone. There's a, there was a question up here. There's a question over there. See, even though I, I, I've been, I'm like, I've been infected by Shatner. So I just said, there's a question over there. So I spent so two fun. hours with him this morning, and he got me. Yeah. So much fun. So little time. Yes. Um, oh, are you kicking me off? <laughs> so, so my question is, uh, you made Either you touch the bottom, or there's a bomb under your chair, <laughs> or... Uh, so my question is, you, you made some comments earlier about how uh, men of certain age, uh, you know, everybody loved it, including the networks, but they couldn't just make it work. And then you also alluded uh, to television and that, you know, you can, you're not sure how many people are watching uh, until you see the numbers the next day. And I, I have sat in some other panels here at the convention where they also talked about how difficult it is in today's environment with uh, TiVo and YouTube and Hulu and, and all those other things um, to really gauge how big your fan base truly is. Um, how much of a challenge is that for you uh, dealing with network executives and obviously you have a long history of dealing with network executives and, and trying to keep your show at home. Could you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, you know, ratings. Uh, I mean, when it was just the Nielsen's, it was confounding because th anybody in this room ever know a Nielsen family? You were one. Get her! <laughs> when, when did you stop? Were you watching the show? You may stay. <laughs> All right, but, but beyond her, you're the first Nielsen person I've heard people say, I have a friend who had to, but I've never met anybody that actually had a, a Nielsen box in their house. It, it, was, it was complicated and convoluted then. Now they have 
not only do you get the overnights, you get the plus threes, the plus sevens, the plus 21s, which are the first days after that they can measure who turned their DV, their, their TiVo on or however whatever mechanism they're using to to uh, download the show or, or store it. And they can add all that together, and then they can kind of come up with these numbers. And um, it's, it, it's gotten more confusing to me than it, than it ever was. And, you know, we don't live in, a, in an era where very many – executives have the um, the freedom to go by their gut because in, that's why when I was talking earlier about it, it's not as much fun as it used to be there was still a t not in the not too distant past when an executive ahead of a network would say I like that show I'm keeping it on quantum leap stayed on the air because fans wrote letters and the network the head of the network said my gosh we, they actually did a commercial where Warren Littlefield was sitting at his desk and they, they staged letters falling from the sky onto his desk and all around him. He said, all right, all right, I'll bring it back. But you don't see that kind of stuff any, anymore. And uh, I hope that he doesn't regret that decision. I, I'm a producer also, so I understand what the numbers are. I get it. I understand what it costs to make television. And, and in this particular instance for TNT, they were also the in-house producer. So it wasn't Warner Brothers for TNT or, or, or for uh, – there weren't two producing entities. They were shouldering the whole thing. So it put them in a little bit – it was their, we're their first in-house production. So it put them in a little bit more of a, a pressurized place. I'm confounded by it. Um, there's so many ways to view shows now and so many ways that it gets out there. You know, when you walk into a room like this, you say, gee, I wish – I wish the networks could come in on some of these journeys and see it. And then they would say, yeah, but that's just, you know, how do we even know they were real fans? Maybe people pay them to come in and sit. And they don't, they don't get it. They don't get it that you folks come from all over the world and, and, and to these events and spend a lot of your hard-earned money because you really care. And television's gotten more isolated and more specific, and the audiences have gotten more specific. And so the, the networks are trying to give you what they hope and – Think that you'll like and imagine that you'll like. And if you're on AMC, um, our numbers would be great. We'd still be on the air. If you're on TNT or USA, our numbers are not good enough to match up with what they're doing. Um, and it just becomes this, you know, it's the second half of the word is business, of, of the name of what we do. And uh, the business is corporate. And we have to, you know, we're selling. The, the bottom line is television was created to sell product. And now everybody's speeding through the product. So they found, you've seen on the internet, how they found a way to make you watch the product, even if it's for 15 seconds or for 12 or whatever it is, they, how they can make you. But they haven't figured out how to do that in reverse on your television set. So until that happens, TV is in a, in a troubling place unless you're a big hit because they're not, people don't, don't feel compelled to watch it the moment it's on. Some shows you do, like a live show, if you're, you know, if you're, so you think you can dance, it's on tonight, I got to see it now, I don't want to see it tomorrow, because everybody will be talking about it. Um, but the landscape has changed, and technology has done that. And as much as I love technology, it's also hurt, hurt our business in a lot of ways. I don't like HD television. I think it's ugly. And uh, as much as they try to make it pretty. And uh, I just don't, I don't care for it. I like, I like that you go to these mediums and escape. And when you're seeing it in such reality, it's just, you know, I don't want to go back to 1954 and, you know, be in an all-girls singing group and in my, in my high heels and, and be in HD. I don't want that. I need a little Vaseline in front of that one. Well, that's what they – here's the thing. They weren't even consistent in, in what they told us because the year before they said, we're doing unbelievably great. Our DVD stuff, our three days, plus threes, plus sevens, it's off the charts. Direct TV is going crazy. We love, love – you guys are – the nobody um, TiVo's – anybody else's show like they TiVo you guys. It's fantastic. And this year, we needed more live people. So that's how fast it changes and moves. And you want to say, okay, everybody, just this week, you know, get up there and watch it live, and we'll be able to come back. 
But, you know, it, it, it's a incredibly fast-changing landscape. And, again, as Mike Roy said, um, any hardly any other network we might have been off after two or three shows. Certainly any of the mainstream networks. And no, I'm not saying that in any way to put down the mainstream networks, but we are u were unique, and we got to be on TNT, and that worked out great for us. And we got 22 shows, which used to be a season. Who else? Got questions? Yes. Anybody? I'm answering, but I'm looking. And I'm right with you, right here. All right. Yes? I, uh, I can hear you, but I don't know. They've got they, they, they're putting you on microphone so that I think that that the streamers can hear you, too. Brush up your Shakespeare. We have a duet coming. Yeah, I've heard that. Okay. They have Muppetized several series and people on the net in the last few months. What Muppetized? What Muppet would you be and why? It's not I that easy being green. <laughs> Kermit, what are you crazy? Yeah. He's I the star, baby. I was always kind of partial to Elmo. I don't know why. I liked Elmo. Ernie, because you want to be tickled. <laughs> <laughs> Cookie Monster is too easy. My name, the the count, it was it's a little too on the nose, you know, considering. That's why we did. That's really why we got canceled. Ray kept saying, "Next year, vampires." <laughs> and I said, "Who's the logical guy to be the vampire on the show?" <laughs> Me. Fuck you, Lo. <laughs> Is that you, Daddy? What are we singing, by the way? When you feel sad, ba, 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 or under a curse. No, you gotta take this part. No, you. Your see, life see, here's the problem. This is called dueling Jesus. <laughs> yeah, we can't do because <laughs> we. It's because uh, you. You can't do. Uh, I'll do Judas. You'll be Judas. I'll try. I never was. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, okay, are you, you ready? I uh, know, but uh, I, I promised them. I promised them something. <laughs> we could, we I know. I have my cane in the car. No, but uh, oh yeah, we too, we could we did soft shoe it and do the whole thing with the cane and everything. We could because I know that you remember it all. I do. Do you? I don't. I never did Judas, but I if you start it. Well then, I'll be, I'll be Judas. you start it. No, I'll be Judas. I don't remember any of it. How often did you hear, ever hear somebody yelling, "I'll be Judas"? No, I'll be Judas. <laughs> Please you let me be Judas. On the cheek? <laughs> you start it. Uh, we well, do a lot. They're, no, we have. We, they're we, very. We, uh, sex, fun. Or under a curse. Your life is bad. Your prospects are worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Your wife is sighing, crying. You know what's singing? And your olive tree is dying. Temples are graying and teeth are decaying and credits are weighing your purse. Your moon and your robe are both a deep blue. You bet that Joe had nothing on you. Don't, Don't forget, forget that when you get to heaven, you'll be blessed. But, uh, but uh, yes, yes, it's all for the best. And then this is when Judas would kick in. People? Oh, you don't know it either? Oh, that's Some men are born lady, doing what they please, richer than the bees, all in honey, yeah, yeah, never going old, never going old, pulling pots of gold from thin air, <laughs> the best in every town, best shaking down, best in every mountains of money, they can't take it with them, but what do they care? They, they get, get the center of the meat, cushions on the sea, has on the street, where it's sunny, shall we see which one of the others we can get the rest, but who is the land for the sun and the sand for you guess? It's all for the you must never forget. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Scott Thank you, Spacula. thank you. Thank you. It's over for you, baby. Scott Bacula, let's oh, go. No, 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 no. Take the microphone. We're going to let Scott. Mikey. 
We're going to let Scott go and take a little breather while you guys kind of chill. We're going to let everybody kind of uh, very, very nicely and orderly start lining out and forming a cute. Oh, uh, we got to take a picture first before you take off. I totally forgot about the photo op. And then once Scott is all set, we're going to get that line going. You guys all get something special signed. Okay, sound good? Does that sound good? All right, picture time. One more time for Scott Bakula. Yeah, everybody stay seated. Everybody stay seated. Sorry, I keep I keep forgetting all these little orders.